holy cow, you guys, pick up your 500 drawing problems book, <sighs> blow the dust off of them because it has been a few months. If you are a veteran to my channel, you may remember the series. I put it on hiatus and I'm just feeling in such a block right now. I haven't been feeling myself artistically, so I think it's time to dust our old buddy off and see what we can create. So as usual, let's draw our ant on the cover and get into this prompt. And with that, let's see what our first prompt is. In many months, we have two, we have jellyfish and candy canes. Too bad I didn't do this prompt a few months ago. All right, I'm going to do some sketching, some brainstorming, and then get to creating some art. Oh man, this feels so weirdly nostalgic. And yet nothing has changed in these past, what is it, six months since I last did a prompt. As usual, I started off by sketching each individual prompt. We have our jellyfish and of course our candy canes, which like I said, had I not quit the prompts back in November, this candy cane prompt would have been perfect for early December or late November. But oh well, here we are doing a sort of Christmassy drawing in April. That's fine. I guess that's just how it is with the prompts. So like I said, I sketched each prompt individually. We have our jellyfish and our candy canes. So jellyfish, obviously there was a lot more variety to add as far as style goes. I feel like I have to say this. I know that jellyfish do not have eyeballs, but it's just something fun to put in, in my style. And then as far as candy canes go, they're very boring and it doesn't seem like there's that much to do with them. So basically it came down to what fun can I have with the jellyfish? Fish. And at first I combined the two to create some cookies made with gingerbread and the candy canes being the tentacles for the jellyfish. And then I thought it would be really cute to design what a mermaid would do for Christmas underwater. Would they still bake? Would it be funny to put an oven under the ocean? So far, that was my idea. But if you are familiar with the prompt series, most of the time what I sketch in the book ends up being changed drastically as if I'm not super happy with the original ideas that I came up with, I give myself an additional day or two to think about what I want to draw and continue brainstorming because even though this series was created as a way for me to be inspired and think outside of the box and just in general create things I don't normally create. Even if it's an idea that I wouldn't have otherwise came up with, I still want to draw something that I feel passionate about and that I really want to draw. So even though a mermaid baking cookies underwater seemed like a really silly and fun idea that I was really into, it it was just a character sitting there and I'm in an art block and it didn't seem super inspiring. And honestly, because I did spend the last couple of months in Japan only allowing myself to work on eight by 10 illustrations because I didn't want to risk damaging my art if it was bigger than eight by 10, which was the easiest size to transport between countries. Honestly, I was really anxious to work big. I wanted to create an illustration that was the next size up. So I broke out an 11 by 14 inch piece of paper and I was really excited to work on just a bigger illustration with more details, more to work on, just a background illustration with silly details here and there, just lots of fish. And so this is where I got the idea to create, well, what I was hoping to make as a underground scene that was maybe decorated or inspired by Christmas. But hey, that is just the way the prompts are. Sometimes you get a Christmas illustration in April and that that's just the way it is. So like I said, I wanted to focus on an illustration that was background or just landscape or environment focused and not necessarily a character focused. So going into this illustration, we have two prompts. We have candy canes and jellyfish. So obviously one of the creatures I was going to have in this background was a jellyfish. I honestly didn't have many plans as far as making the jellyfish fun or interesting or just a little bit more unique than just a jellyfish. 
I think my main focus in this illustration came from the candy canes, which I decided to turn into coral reef. Or if not coral reef, just some sort of underwater plant thing that was in the shape of a candy cane. I wanted to think of a subtle yet obvious way that maybe more people would decorate the ocean for Christmas. So I lined a sandy path that were in the shape of candy canes. Now going into the coloring of this illustration, I was thinking about making them red and white striped, but I did think that that was just a little bit too on the nose. And even though technically, I guess I didn't draw candy canes because they aren't made out of candy, I guess as usual with prompts, it's pretty much up to my interpretation and candy canes could be fake candy canes or imitation candy canes. So we have fake coral reef candy cane shaped things. Good enough. The prompt series is all about being creative and just coming up with ideas I wouldn't normally draw. So honestly, being super accurate with the prompts isn't one of my concerns. I just want to have fun with my illustrations. So obviously this is a very generic underwater scene aside from the candy cane shaped coral reef. There's not too much going on as far as the animals go, but after I inked the illustration and after I had taped it down ready to watercolor, I thought it would be really interesting and it kind of looked like I had set it up for something to be in the middle of this illustration. It looked like all the animals were around something in the center of this illustration waiting for something to happen, yet there was nothing there. So last minute I decided to add a coral reef, a very huge and magnificent and probably worshipped in this world coral reef that was pretty much the Christmas tree of the time. I'm sure they decorated it for every holiday, but because it is Christmas, that was the focus. And I did think about putting garland and ornaments and lights on this thing, but I thought it would actually look really nice just plain and as is. I wanted it to be giving off this natural glow that just looked really beautiful and illuminated on its own. And I didn't want to glam it up too much and make it too artificial. So then when it came to coloring this piece, I had wholeheartedly gone into this wanting to make it fully colored. So I started off with a blue wash throughout the whole illustration because I thought it would be really fun if the whole illustration had this really cohesive blue color to it where it kind of brought everything together. So after I put down the first layer of really light blue, I went back to the middle ground, added a darker blue, and in the background I added a darker blue. I did avoid the, what am I going to call it? A coral reef tree in the middle. I did want to give it the appearance that maybe it was glowing, but I'm not really sure if I accomplished that, though I do think it looks really neat. Even as this illustration being just blue, just the one color, it looked so cool layered. And that's where I got the idea to just color everything in the foreground and then leave everything in the background as as that blue color and then later go in with purple shading. So I was a little hesitant to go through with this idea because I didn't know if it was going to be too boring to have the background and midground just blue and that was it. But I think there was just enough color and brightness and vibrancy in the foreground, especially with those green eels that I think it was okay. The whales are gray, which is a little boring, but the candy cane coral reef are this bright red. The sand is this bright yellow. Like I said, the eel are these bright green colors. And I think everything in the foreground stood out just enough to where I think that leaving the background and midground these different shades of blue worked perfectly. And especially because I left that coral reef tree in the middle a white, which really made it stand out, that I don't think the rest of the illustration really needed the color. And I think that's what's so much fun about the prompt series that I kind of miss right now is having this experimental, but also challenging as far as subject of illustration goes where I can just try new things and not necessarily focus on making something that I really enjoy, but trying new things and seeing what works. And also I'm in such an art block that I think I also just need that structure of something I'm used to happening. So I'm probably going to be bringing back some old series for the next couple of months and who knows what I'll bring back. 
That being said, I'm not 100% happy with this illustration. I think, to be honest, I think the one thing I just don't like about it is the jellyfish. They just kind of seem off. I think if I just completely got rid of the jellyfish and just put more regular fish shadows at the top of the illustration, I would be much happier. But again, that's the way the prompt series is. Sometimes I love them, sometimes I don't. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this prompt. Did you miss it? Did you not care for the series to begin with? Let me know in the comments and I will see you guys in the next one. But hey, you know what? We have the end card to look to. So because I said the last prompt was the last in the series, it looks like a lot of you guys didn't want to join in. But hey, we've got a few very dedicated of y'all who joined in anyways. And I am so grateful and so surprised to see these five amazing artists who went ahead and joined in on our last prompt, which was a new typeface. The one and only artist I'm going to feature in this video is Taekwon Ditto because they have been so loyal with this series. They always participate and it's just been so much fun to watch them grow as an artist. So thank you so much to Taekwon Ditto for participating once again and I cannot wait to see what you make for this prompt if you're if you're still watching. As usual, if you do want to participate in the prompt series, which I cannot guarantee when the next video will come out, but you can use the hashtag CaseyThePrompt on Twitter, Instagram, and Tumblr, and maybe you'll make it in the video, maybe you won't. All right guys, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Stay golden, bye.